Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord that made thee, and formed thee in the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jerusalem, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and upon thy blessing, upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up among the grass, as the willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me, there is no God. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you for this 445. Again, Lord God, we thank you for every man that's come out. We pray, Lord God, your richest blessing upon them and their families. We ask you, Lord God, today that you would be with us, that you would impact us in a marvelous way. We ask you, Lord God, that you would move mightily. Holy Spirit of God, that you would sweep to the pews of this chapel, that you would have your way with every heart, including this preacher. And we glorify you, Lord God, in everything we do. We thank you in your holy name. And everyone said, Amen. I was asked to preach this message, uh, God's promises to parents. But it's also more than just for parents. It's just for us in general as well. These verses are a good perspective of how God really loves you. How God really cares for you but also how God cares for your children and God cares for what they're going through. I raised two boys by myself and uh, one was sort of good, the other one was awful in a, in a lot of ways, but I wasn't the best dad in the world either. And I remember this sermon by Dave Wilkerson of all people and when I heard it, it totally revolutionized my way of thinking about my children. I, I love them both equally. I, I, I pray for them that they would turn to God, but there was just a lot of rebellion in, in that house at the time, and it, it was a bad deal, And but I come through it all. But I want to just share this with you because I, I believe that there are parents in here right now that you have children and you have uh, children that you want to see, but for some reason you're just not able to at this time. But I want to give you an encouragement through the Word of God today that the Lord knows your children, amen? amen. That He knows what they're going through. He created them. Uh, we read in verse 1, Yet thou hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. That speaks of the, of the people, the chosen people of Israel. Thus says the Lord that made thee. He made you. He made your children. Uh, we're grafted into the vine. We're grafted into Israel. So we're grafted into the vine. And as such, we enjoy a lot of the benefits. And we can share a lot of the word of God that comes to us. But it says, thus says the Lord God that made thee. And formed thee in the womb, which will help thee. He said he will help. He knows exactly how you're made. He knows exactly how your children's made. He knows exactly how your wives are made. He knows exactly everything every down to the last cell. And he wants to be a blessing to you. And he wants to be a blessing to your children. And what he is saying, gentlemen, he says, I understand you've got kids. They may be rebellious. They may not want to listen to you. They may not care about you. But he is saying, I understand all that. I understand what the kids are about. I understand what it's hard to be able to go through what they're going through today. And he says, I understand that. And he said that he will help. So that's a blessing. He will not only help your children, gentlemen, he'll help you. He'll help you with your situation. He'll help you with your wife. He'll help you to establish things that you need to establish for yourself. Some of you have been fighting for a job. You've been unemployed a long time. Some of you have been fighting to, to be able to find shelter, to find a place for yourself. Sometimes uh, people hear that 
And, and, and people that I talk to in here, they're, they're battling all sorts of drugs, the alcohol, pornography, and the list goes on and on and on. They're battling these things. And they said, where's my help? How am I ever going to get out of this mess? And God says, I will help thee. Amen. God says, he will help thee. He says, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jerusalem, whom I have chosen. Uh, I like that word. If you look at that word, Jerusalem, in that verse, that verse is only mentioned uh, a couple times in the word of God. And what it, what it means is it means beloved Israel. That's what that term means, beloved Israel. But if you're a child of God, here's, here's, where, here's where I've connected the dots, guys. If you're a child of God, he said you're beloved also. That he loves you and cares for you as well. That he cares about your situation. He cares about what you're going. He cares about your circumstances. And that he says, I love you as well. And you're beloved. And because, again, we're grafted into the vine. We're grafted in as part of the Israel, be part of the church. We enjoy the blessings of that. And the Lord cares for you. And he wants to do a wondrous work in your life. He says, I have chosen you. I have chosen you. People say they come to Christ sometimes and they, they say, well, I found God. And that's not a true statement. You didn't find God and he wasn't looking. You weren't looking. You know, God wasn't lost. and You weren't looking and God found you. And God gave you the opportunity to know him. And if you've been here for any length of time, I, I would think that every preacher that comes through here shares the word of God, either it's Daniel or somebody from the front desk or anybody that comes in here and volunteers, I would think to share the gospel with you. And they care for you. And he, he says, I have chosen you. That means he's got a connection with you that know him and he wants to establish himself in your life, not only in your life, but in your wife's lives, in your children's lives, in the relatives that you have. He wants to establish who he is in your life. He says in verse 3, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and that is the precious Holy Spirit of God. That's that living water that we speak of. He wants to pour that upon you. What a blessing that is that God would love you so much that he would want to pour that living water upon you. You may remember the story of the woman at the well. And Jesus had, was talking to her alone and she was drawing out water out of the well. And Jesus offered her living water. And she said, how could I get this living water? And Jesus went on to be able to proclaim the gospel to her. She got saved and a multitude of people got saved. And it was a great outpouring. But that same God, that same Holy Spirit and the same living water that God has, he wants to pour upon you as well. He wants to. He's just eager to be able to say, who is it in this 445 that's eager to know Jesus Christ? I want to pour this living water upon you that you will not only have your sin debt forgiven, not only your names in the last book of life, not only are you canceled from that horrible sin, but I want... To, to prosper you in the things of God. I want to grow you in the things of God. God wants to do that in your life. He wants to do that in your life. He wants to pour himself into your life that you could be a representation of Christ in this lost and dying world. Amen? He says, I will pour my water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry grounds. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. You see, he cares for your offspring, your children. He said he wants to pour the Holy Spirit of God, that living water, he wants to pour into your children. They may be rebellious right now. They may be in and out of incarceration. They may be in and out of trouble with the law with the school system and 
you wonder how much more could I possibly take of this kid coming in and out of trouble all the time. You may wonder, what else do I got to do? This, this kid will just not listen. The kid will just, is just born rebellious. But God says, listen, I know your child. I know that you're trying to do what you could do with what you have. And I understand that you only have so much that you could do as a parent. But God says, I am the creator of all things. I hold your children in my hand. I know your children. I know their rebellion. I know the difficulty you have raising them. I know the trouble that they're in and out of all the time. But God says this, that there is enough Holy Spirit of God in this world to be able to turn your child around. Instead of being a rebellious child that can be a child of the King, he's able to do that. And all of us that knew Jesus, that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior right now in this service right now, I would dare say we're all rebellious at one time. We all did our own thing at one time. I, it, maybe it's just me. But God knows how effectively to be able to enter into your children's lives and to turn that child around from being rebellious and to be a child of God. Amen. That's the testimony of a lot of people. He said, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. He will pour himself into your children. He will do whatever it takes to be able to save their souls. I can tell you as a parent of two boys, I can tell you as a parent, the prayers that you pray for your children, although they may seem like they're going nowhere, they may seem like they are falling on deaf ears in heaven, I am confident of this one thing, that God hears all of your prayers, and God is is sending the Holy Spirit of God after your children to be able to convict them of the rebellion. That he's convicting them. Whether they will break down on it, whether they will give up their life of rebellion, I don't know. But I do know this, that God is, God is awesome, and God is able to bring those rebellious children into salvation. He is willing and able as you continually pray, as you continually seek Him to reach out through the Holy Spirit of God and continually work on your children, and if you continually pray and pray without ceasing and not give up, I believe, not all the time, I'm not a prosperity preacher, I don't believe in any of that stuff, but I, I do believe that there is this opportunity that God is able to be able to reach deep into your child's heart and is able to turn their lives from a stony heart into a heart of flesh. Amen. Amen. I believe that God is able to do such things. And they shall spring up among the grass. The grass are those multitudes that are saved. That's the multitudes. The grass are the many people that are Christians that are saved. And he says they shall spring up among the grass as willows by the water courses. He will not only save your child, he can not only save your child, but he will put him among the grass, among the multitudes of those that are saved, and not only the multitudes that are saved, he says in their walk of sanctification, a big word we use to grow in your walk with Christ. He says in your walk with Christ, they will be like a willow tree, in a willow tree next to a water, you could just imagine, as you know, they get huge, especially next to a river, next to a lake. When you see a big willow, they get huge. And, and the imagery that Christ has given us is that he will do that work in their life. They will not only get saved, not only will they be among the multitudes of Christians, but he will plant them next to the water of the Holy Spirit of God that comes into their life and they will grow deep in their walk. And this is the grace of God. This whole chapter is the grace of God that is being poured out upon you and I that don't deserve it. 
We don't deserve any of what God is saying to us in these, in these verses. But we're thankful that he is because it's all about God. It's all about God caring about you. It's all about God caring about me. It's all about God caring for your wives, your, your, your significant others. But it's all about God caring for your children as well. And he wants to see them saved. He wants to see them saved. He wants to see them in the multitudes of people that are Christians. And he wants to see them have their own faith. Not your faith. Not your wife's faith. Not your mom's faith. Your grandmother's faith. Your dad's faith. He wants them to have their own faith. And sometimes we give up on our kids too easily. We get caught in the trenches. We get caught in the wars. and We, we wear out. We wear out, but God says, I know. I know the battle that you're going through, gentlemen. He says, I know the battle you have with your kids. I know the difficulty you're having with them. And he says, I can bring an end to that rebellion. I can bring an end to the tragedy of what's going on in your household. He can not only change your children's lives, but gentlemen, he can change your lives as well. And he could change the lives of your wife. If the, the family structure is not working out, there's a multitude of possibilities why it's not working out. But all in all, God wants to change the whole thing. He wants to change the whole nucleus of the family that it all works out. And if I need to change, if you need to change, your wife needs to change, your child needs to change, God doesn't want rebellion in the house, but he wants to see peace and order in the house. He wants to see joy. And in order to do that, sometimes it, you have to go down a shaky road. Sometimes you have to go down a, a, a road that's full of hard, hard knocks. But in the end, it comes out. My youngest boy, I had to put him out. I said, this is my house. I, these are my rules. They weren't difficult rules. You just come in at a certain time. I don't want you drinking liquor in my house. I don't want you smoking dope in my house. This is what I'm expecting you to do. Come in at a certain time. And that didn't pan. And so I threw him out. I threw him out. It was tough love. I didn't want to enable him. I didn't want to... I didn't want to say that my words were meaningless. And so he caught some cases. But he's 30 years old today, not today, but last couple months ago. And he's a far better man now than he was as a boy. He's a better man because he went to the school of hard knocks and he understood that things were a lot nicer for him than he thought they were. He found out that God is able to do a mighty work in his life, but he only knew that when he was thrown out of the house. He was able to reach deep inside of him and analyze himself and say, what kind of a child am I that I'm so rebellious against my parents? And he pulled himself out and, like I said, today he's a better man. He takes care of his bills, takes care of his family, and he's a different man today than he was. All because God worked in his life. Verse 5 says, One shall say, I am the Lord's. The other one shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall scribe with his hand unto the Lord. And surname himself by the name of Israel. The Lord is telling us that he has saved not only Israel, but his grace is being extended to you and I as Gentiles who are grafted in. He shall say, one shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. So he's talking about Gentiles, and the grace of God that come into the Gentiles, and the grace of God that flows to the Israelites. They both have the same opportunity to know him as Lord and Savior. <laughs> that his grace is able to pour through both people, through the Gentiles, which are us, and the Israelites, that are the Jewish people, both. And so he's able to save both people. And there is an abundant amount of grace in God's hands to be able to help you as a parent, to be able to help you to be able to deal with your children, to be able to help them through their situation. 
God says, I know what's going on in your family. I know what's going on in your life. I know what you got to improve on. And believe me, this parent has a lot to improve on. If, if your wife needs to improve it, God says, I know how to, how to improve her too, to be a better mom, to be a better wife. But God says, listen to this. He says, I also know your child. I know your child should obey you. I know your child should have reverence for you because you're the parent. And if they're not doing that, he says, I know how to take care of that as well. God says, I understand the problem. I understand your situation as parents. And I've given you parents promises through the word of God in Isaiah 44 to help you to be able to equip you with what you need in order to be a godly parent. I know what it's going to take for your children to be turned around. And I want to encourage you as parents that I'm on the throne. I know your child. I know you. I know the rebellion. I know the Holy Spirit of God. I know that there's enough living water to turn your child around. I know that there's enough living water not only to turn your child, children around, but to help you with your situation, whatever improvements you need to make in life, and your wives or your significant others. He says, I got it all. I, I know exactly what to do. And if you're a parent today, and again, I was asked to preach this message, and because uh, there are parents in this room that have children, this is what I did when I was faced with this situation in my life. I took these verses and I prayed on them. Like we did Thursday night when we stood up and we prayed. The, the, the prayer in 2 Chronicles 20. This prayer is something if you're a parent and you have rebellious children, you can lift up before the Lord and say, Lord, these are your promises for me as a parent. Your promise is this, that you want to help me as a parent. That you understand my struggles, you understand my difficulties, you understand what I'm going through as a parent. I need your strength. I need your courage. I need your boldness to continually not give up on my kid for praying for them, for seeing them through. I don't want to give up on them. And sometimes the battle gets heated. Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it gets all right difficult. But God, I know your word tells me in Isaiah 44 that I can continue to pray, that I can continue to seek you in these verses. And I know you will send the hounds of heaven after my kids, amen? Because I know, I know my children. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. I am the first and the last, and besides me there is no God. By putting your faith and trust in the one true God, there is this ability through God to change. It's not going to be through idols. It's not going to be through things that you think are a ways to go about it. But it's going to be through God and through God working through you into your children's lives. It's going to be through God saying, I know, I know, I know. But I am God, he'll say. I did create you. I created your children. I know their shortcomings. I know exactly what to do to be able to save them. Whether they will or not is up to them. They have a free will. But I know how to save them. I am the true God, he'll say. And because he's the true God, he knows the answer. He's not a false God. He's not a book. He's not just somebody that you just read about. But he says, I know the battle of parenting. And he says, I want to bring an encouragement to you because I know, I know, I know. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the service. Lord, as we consider the words that were spoken in Isaiah 44, I can't help but to think of the parents that are out in this auditorium this, this afternoon that are facing difficulties. With heads bowed and eyes closed, 
Would there be anybody that raised their hand and say, Preacher, you're talking about my kid. You're talking about my kid, amen. You're talking about my kid. Anybody else want to raise their hand and say, Hey, you're talking about my kid, amen. Let me pray for you and let me, uh, let me lead out. Heavenly Father, I pray for these that have raised your hand and for those that haven't. I ask you, Lord God, that you move mightily and bountifully in their lives, in their children's lives. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would not only work bountifully in their lives, in their children's lives, but you would work bountifully in their family. That you'd restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. That you'd restore the joy and the peace. Lord, that you would save the whole household. And Lord, I pray that you work mightily and bountifully in that family unit. Is there any men here today that would raise their hand and say, Today I don't know Jesus, but I want to know him as Lord and Savior. Would anybody raise their hand and say, Today I want to know Christ. I want to know Jesus today. Anybody? All right.